Hours Live. My name is Chris. Thank you so much for joining me. In this episode, I want to talk about a $419,000 sale that I had on eBay back in 2012. So you guys know, I used to work for Lexus. I sold new cars for them for four years uh, from 2010 to 2014. In 2012, the Lexus LFA came out. They made 500 of them. And the dealership asked me to get rid of it. They're like, this car is very expensive. It has a high flooring cost. What that means is dealerships don't front the cost for all the money of the vehicles in their dealership. The manufacturer sort of lends them to you while you sell them and there's a flooring cost. This had the most expensive flooring cost of any car and it was really expensive, right? So $419,000 just collecting dust in the showroom. I started trying to figure out who can even buy this car. We live in Silicon Valley, I'm calling up tech people. None of them have any actual money. They're all asset heavy, so they own stock, but they have no cash. Um, the creator of the Droid um, operating system for Google has had two of them. He bought one that was the right color exterior, one with the right color interior, paid $25,000 to swap it so he could get the car that he wanted. This is That's some crazy money, but that is what it's like here in that realm of lifestyle. People pay for exactly what they're looking for. So I assumed the person buying this car would just pay cash for it but it was not the case. And a restaurateur bought this car and financed it. I didn't even know you could finance a car of that value. Um, when I called Toyota Motor, uh, the bank, Lexus Financial, to get the deal, um, they actually said instantly approved. This guy already had a history. He's had multiple supercars and definitely wealthy enough to just pay cash. Earned $600,000 per month as a restaurateur and uh, most of his money was made selling wine. I'll go over that in just a moment, but he was earning more than 4.9% in his investments. So for him, he tried to finance the entire thing, but the bank required a $100,000 down payment, which was no issue. And this is, a, I think, a, an amateur mistake. So I've been selling stuff for a long time. You assume someone that's looking at a $419,000 car can afford it. Okay, so I didn't say, do you wanna take some do you want a discount? I didn't go over that because there's actually $49,000 worth of profit built into the car. Um, so when it came out the total, I said, okay, it's $419,000. You're approved for, on credit. Um, you need a $100,000 down payment though. Do you want to write a check for the $100,000 or do you want to wire transfer $100,000? It's up to you. Your reputation is fine. So my boss is okay with you writing a personal check. So he said, no, I would rather do a wire transfer. Here's my assistant's information they'll wire transfer the money in. Um, as, long, and as soon as he signed the contract, he was good to go. My boss didn't require for the, the check to clear or anything because this person already had a really good reputation. So $100,000 down, we went on a test drive. I had to clear all this insurance before we went to drive. His insurance policy was $40,000 a year. That's more than most people's mortgages. This is just his insurance policy for his vehicles. And it only allowed 2,000 miles per supercar. It was an interesting insurance policy that also no insurance coverage if the car ever touched a racetrack. So he had plans of driving this Laguna Seca and taking it to all these race car sites. But as soon as he did that, of course, the, the, there's no insurance policy for actual racing. So interesting looking at that specific level. Also, he drove a Maserati Quadraporte to the dealership and he was like, do you want to drive it back to my residence? And I said, no, because I didn't want to screw up a $49,000 commission. So I paid um, a couple hundred bucks out of my commission. I split it with the dealership to actually flatbed his car back to his residence. Because what's the point of getting this huge commission and crashing this guy's car on his way home and causing a problem? So I didn't do that. I just said, we're, we're white glove service. We'll just tow the car back to your place. Now, the reason why I bring up this story is because I learned a lot about business from this gentleman. First off, no cell phone. He told me he was gonna be at the dealership two weeks after he actually came. He called, he said, I saw the listing on eBay. It's the color I want. It's what I'm looking for. I'm gonna be there in two Mondays from now because my only day off is on a Monday. I'm gonna show up at nine in the morning and buy the car. And I said, okay. And my boss was like, are you sure? Because I, I feel like, that, you know, how can we, believe this guy and I'm like well let's just assume he I, I googled him he already looks like he has the money let's just give it a shot so my boss said okay let's just make sure the insurance is in place warm up the car a couple of days before make sure it works and we actually flew up the person that 
can explain the car in full detail from LA. So this car is interesting. It's so high tech, they actually have a technician flown in from Japan. He happened to be in LA at the time to explain all the features of the car. It, this is insane. It costs $2,000 per oil change. And when you get your oil changed with this car, included in that $2,000, I'm sorry, not included in $2,000 is the flatbed. So $2,000 plus flatbedding. So tow the car in, do the oil change, send it back 2,000 bucks plus towing. So not, it doesn't just end with the $419,000 with this car. It costs a lot of money to maintain it, but it's one of only five, 500 of them. They're super cool. I think the rev, it revs up to like 11,000 RPM or 13,000 RPM. It's insane. It sounds like a Formula One car. So I learned a lot from this guy. No cell phone, doesn't give out his, his email address, complete control of his time. When he showed up, no jewelry. So, so this like, guy had complete control of his time. And essentially what he is, is a wine reseller. This is why I wanna talk about this because it relates to what we're doing. So he's a wine reseller, he sells wine. He told me that there is actually no, nothing really special you can do about how you present wine. Um, everyone can sell wine for the same amount of money. You just have to get the right crowd into the space to sell them the wine, to make it special. It's really the ambiance, the environment that you can create to get the person to buy from you. So his wife happened to be a Michelin star chef. So it helps to have your wife be an entrepreneur like that. And she made an amazing restaurant that is $77 per person prefix very inexpensive for fine dining. So that created a year and a half wait, creating an amazing meal for only $77 prefix, which is really cheap in the Bay Area for that type of meal. That caliber meal could easily be $200 a person, but $77 kept the line super long. He would present three wines with every single course and the wine in the middle had the most profit margin and most people didn't know enough about wine to understand so they always picked the middle option which is always at the highest margin because they didn't want to spend money on the most expensive one being afraid to to spend money on something they didn't need so pretty cool very smart and that's ended up pushing the average bill from uh, 77 dollars for just the food all the way up to like over 600 dollars per person with the wine pairings meaning each of the seven courses or eight courses would come with a different selection of the wine. So I learned a lot from this guy. One was how to price your item, how to get the, the captive audience to come in so that you can sell them something amazing. Also, this is interesting. I didn't give him a discount, right? So he mentioned that. He just stuck it in there as we were doing all the paperwork. He was like, I noticed you didn't give me a discount on the car. And I feel like that's that's very interesting of you to do that because I was expecting sort of the salesman to lay down and just give me $25,000 off because that happens when you're selling these supercars. Sometimes there's a huge amount of room. So oftentimes not, but sometimes there is room. And he's like, you do business like I do because you cannot get a discount at my restaurant, even if you're my friend. I don't offer a discount, so I don't expect a discount. So that's interesting, right? If you're a reseller and you're always looking to grind people to get the lowest possible amount, you can definitely expect your customers to do the same to you, right? Depending on what kind of industry you're in. Like if you're selling something super hot, super popular, super amazing, rare, limited, you don't have to offer a discount because people really, really, really want it and there's not that much of it, right? So to get a meal under a hundred bucks in the Bay Area, that's that's amazing, it's, it's impossible. People really wanted that product, he doesn't have to offer a discount. So if I ever go to this restaurant, I don't really expect to get a discount from the guy. That's not how this, this works. I also wanna mention how he put together his restaurant. So he works six days a week, he takes Mondays off. That's why he bought the car on a Monday. And he just plans his leisure on Mondays. This is amazing. His wife actually does not have a driver's license, but he has a $100,000 a month car habit. So I find that very entertaining that they drive, they only live like a mile and a half from work. He drives like a minimum $200,000 car, two miles to work with his wife sitting shotgun. That's really funny to me. But what they do during the week is very revealing because as resellers, I think the biggest question I get is, how can I improve my sourcing? I wanna talk about what this guy did. So 6 a.m. he would wake up with his wife. They would go to the markets, they would go to the gardens. One thing that makes fine dining truly amazing, a lot of it here is farm to table. So they literally go to where the food is made. The closer you can get to where the food was sourced or produced, the better the margin, also the better the food tastes. 
This is exactly the same with reselling. The closer you get to where the item is actually sourced, the higher the margin. And also, there's a lot less competition when you're the first person there getting it. The food tastes the best. It's also the best experience for the customer because you can sell it at the most competitive price. So from 6 a.m. to 4 p.m., he and his wife would design the menu. This is also interesting to understand. He was not able to sell the same thing every single day because the same thing wasn't available every day. I think a lot of resellers are hoping that once they find this golden product, it'll just keep selling forever. That's not really the case. You just sell what you can find to the best of your ability. Sure, it's the same category. He's still making dinner for people, um, but the actual presentation just comes from what's available at the market. That's exactly like reselling. You go in with an idea of what you want to source, but you're not going to find exactly what you're looking for. But, you know, people had asked in my, my bin 464, what is in there? Why is this so beat up? And the answer is swimwear. The reason why that's so beat up is because I bought a really big lot of sandals last November. And, and while I was looking for more sandals, I ran into this swimsuit dealer. That, that's my top selling product is swimsuits. And it's because it wasn't even on purpose. It just, I just ran into those looking for sandals. That's why that bin is so beat up. So I only have three left out of a few thousand pairs of shorts that I bought. So, and now I'm gonna be looking for that kind of deal again because it's cold now. So you should be buying off season to make the most profit, right? So this person was sourcing the top ingredients because when you have the best tasting food, he told me, that making money in America is actually quite easy. You just have to serve the very, very top. That's always one way of approaching reselling. If you sell the best of the best, you never need to offer a discount. You just need to spend literally the whole day looking for it. From six to 4 p.m., he and his wife would design the menu, buy all the ingredients, but they didn't necessarily make it. This is the part that's very interesting. They would set it up, design the menu, maybe make it once so that the, the staff and sous chef could figure out what it was. Then they spent the evening explaining the food to the customers. Hi, this is what we sourced today. This is how we came up with the menu. Do you wanna try one of these three wines that we picked would taste best with this meal? What do you think? They were able to offer that hand-to-hand -hand boutique service because somebody else was actually doing the hard work of, of making the menu. So they were restaurateurs, but more like marketing geniuses because you're just there presenting what you per what you designed, what you envisioned throughout the day. So I think a lot of people think that you need to sell cheap stuff to make a, lot, a living on eBay, and that's one way to approach it. But let me let me give you the opposite uh, end of the spectrum. You could serve just 40 tables and make several million dollars a year doing it the opposite way. So you need to pick how many people do you want to serve. If you only want to serve a few people, your services better be really expensive. And usually there's always a market for the top of anything. You know, there's bow and arrows that cost $200,000 because the people at the very highest level want that. There are sports cars that are $5 million because at the very top level, people want to, to, to afford that. He talked a lot about the Ferrari GTO and that's his dream car. And he's like, one day he'll be able to afford the $20 million or something it costs to buy, you know, one of those. So there's different levels of different things, but just think about this. However many people you want to serve, determines how long you need to spend sourcing. If you want to serve the very best of the best, have only a few customers, you better spend your entire day, entire day sourcing one thing. Like if you want to sell to the masses, you don't need to do that. Okay, because anything, the masses just buy cheap stuff that you find wherever. So you can just literally go to Goodwill today, buy a bunch of random junk. If it's cheap enough, it'll sell. Okay, that's a different way of approaching this. You can scale that too. There are large companies who sell thrifted goods and make several million dollars a year too. It just depends on the scale. You just have to think about how much time you actually have, how many people you want to serve. Consider your employees like people that you serve. I mentioned in a previous video that I'm thinking about this, like servant leadership. That's how all the richest people that I have met act. This person's goal in life is just to be a servant to his specific customers, right? And you start thinking about what they want and making the best possible food for that demographic. If you're serving millions of people, you need to sell stuff like towels, knives, napkins, toilet paper, vitamins, because that has the largest, widest thing, or, or clothing, or used clothing, or affordable things. If you're serving the top 
1% of people, they're not interested in that. They're interested in the rare 1400s vintage silver something that only they can have and they can show it off at dinner with their group of friends and be like, you can't have this because only one king in Sweden had it and now I have it, right? That's a totally different market, okay? So think about who you wanna serve. It's gonna make this a lot easier. You wanna be as specific as you can. I think a lot of people say I'll sell anything to anyone and that's almost guaranteeing yourself to, to have a terrible store with really low sell-through rate because if you don't know who you're serving, you can't really do a good job, in my opinion. So appreciate you guys. All my videos are sponsored by my reseller field guide, um, which is in the description below for 35 bucks. That helps you make $1,000 per week if you can find the supply. So I'm not gonna promise that I can help you find a supply because that's impossible. Don't listen to people online who can promise you that. For $2,000, those ex really expensive courses promise that you can they help you with the sourcing, but they're just gonna tell you the same thing as me, which is niche down, figure out where something comes from, contact a supplier, figure out what that supplier needs, you deliver what they need, they'll do business with you. That's a $2,000 course for you for free. The $35 course that I have is just how to set up your accounting, how to set up um, your photo station. It's the simple basic stuff that, that people need to do when they start a store. The sourcing part though, that's called business development. Okay, and that just comes from experience, learning how to deal with what suppliers want, learning what to do with what your audience wants. So hopefully that's useful, guys. Hope you enjoyed the story. Smash the like button. I'll see you guys next time.